Peter, first of all, can you bring us up to date with the injury situation? Obviously, Virgil van Dijk, Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, Abby Keita, and James Milner. Oxley Chamberlain, Rian Brewster. Did I forget anybody? Probably not. Um, not really. Um, we had the yesterday's session and a uh, few of the boys um, trained. We have to see how they reacted after that. And the only, yeah, I think what's pretty sure that the Nabi will not be will not be available. With all the rest, we have we have to see how it develops. Sorry, we're a bit early. <laughs> yeah. We spoke about injuries. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it pretty much. With Virgil, though, there was a claim from Ronald Koeman that he'd been playing with two broken ribs the past few weeks. Is that the case? How has he been getting through it? Well, oh, look, it, I don't think it's... Um, yes, he had, you saw when he, when he went off. Everybody saw it huh? when he went off. Which game was it? Oh, yeah. Southampton. Yeah, when he went off, that Virgil would not leave the pitch without any... Um, major problems, I would say. So, um, but it settled pretty quick, and that's how it is. But um, it's um, yeah. football players have to play very often with with some kind of pain. That's how it is. But it is exactly that's not too important. But um, we are all happy that uh, if he don't say anything about it, that then Mr. Kuhn can <laughs> that he has something to talk about in the press conference. So that's good. Um, but yeah. Uh, all good. He's um, in, has no problems with that anymore. Looking ahead then to the game, and we obviously know that you and Dave Wagner are pretty good friends. What have you made a Huddersfield start to the season, given that the six points worse off than at the same stage last season? Yeah, maybe first of all, I have to say the most important thing: Happy birthday, Dave! <laughs> yeah, it's his birthday today. 47, for people that don't know. Um, I know with the grey beard he looks a bit older, that's like me, but um, it's only 47. Um, the season is... Uh, there are two seasons, actually, they play in the moment. The one is, the one is result-wise, the other one is performance-wise. And uh, it's... They're in a good shape. And I know it's quite difficult for people who don't watch the games that you then realize that the team has three points and, um, and lost most of the games, that it then you talk about quality and stuff like that. But I can tell you one little story. When we started our analyze meeting and our pre-match analyst came in and we have a seat and then he said, they are much stronger than you would imagine. So that was his words, not well, his words, not mine. And um, because I knew it before. That's his, That's just. Uh, that's why I, I use the word trap. Um, if you have a look um, on the table, yeah, then you can think one team twenty, the other team three points. That it's a it's a clear, um, a clear situation. But it isn't because they had more possession against Tottenham. People are maybe not interested in that, but that's a big step. They 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 promoted with um, with playing football. They stayed in the league last year, and I say in this year it's the strongest side and the strongest um, football they played so far, the best football they played so far. And that's that sort of makes it really difficult. And how I, how you can imagine, I speak a lot to Dave, not this week, <laughs> but all the other weeks. And um, so I know the atmosphere in the club is still is still brilliant. So there will be an outstanding atmosphere in others field and we need to be ready for a, for a, really, for a really tough game. They defend in different systems. They play football and so far, they struggle with scoring goals, but that's that's pretty much that's pretty much all. And how we all know things, we all always hope that things like that change for ourselves. So we have to uh, at least yeah, to think that's possible that it will change for other teams as well. So we need to be ready for that after international break with all these different um, styles, systems, situations, little injuries, bigger injuries, stuff like that. Coming together, having two days to prepare a game, playing against the team of um, yeah more or less downstairs on the table and then and then it's like wow okay so that's a big challenge and we need to be ready for that and um, how I said we had yesterday and today and tomorrow we need to be ready that's the job no we don't make presents anymore we, we passed that um, that age but um, I 
hope I don't have one tomorrow, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, just into, I was going to ask you whether you're worried about David or not, but given what you've just said, are you more worried about what they could do to you rather than his own personal experience? Well, there's no reason to be worried about Dave's situation at Huddersfield. No. Um, getting promoted with Huddersfield, I used the words of a friend, is a miracle. Staying in the league is a miracle. And now this year, if he stays in the league, then he has a hat-trick for miracles. And if people are waiting for the third time and, and think, well, what are they doing? How people often talk about football, you can't help these people, but they, these people don't work at Huddersfield. So they, um, obviously they came there because they found a, a, a situation where they, where they work together in the, in the best way they can and they tr trust, rightly so, Dave, to one, uh, with 100%. So, and that's, the, that's all. And um, in this specific case, I think we can say that because yeah, Liverpool could be managed by a lot of managers because it's an outstanding team and a, and, a, and, a fantastic, uh, and, a, and a fantastic club. But I don't think that any other manager in the world could have done the job Dave did with Huddersfield so far. Nobody needed Huddersfield in the Premier League, but now they are there because they did what they did. They lived their dreams still. And that makes it really difficult. That makes it difficult because I don't think they lose confidence that early. They will be. They, they knew each player who they signed. They knew before the season. It will be hard. So they were ready for that before the season started, and now they fight for it. And that's what we expect. That's what I tell the boys. Without making them bigger than they are, and not because Dave is my friend, only because I know more about the story because he's my friend. So, but I saw it. I watched it, and it's great what they do. And you see the probably if you I, um, the game against. Tottenham. I, I, we played Tottenham a lot of times, and we had real, we have problems. It's what, what is normal, but in this game, two situations decided the game, and they could have scored by themselves as well. So that's it. That's football, and we um, need to be ready. So I'm not worried about Dave's situation at Huddersfield because there's no reason for it. But um, and I'm not worried about us going to Huddersfield. But I have to to say the things I see. I cannot. Um, ignore the quality of an opponent, only that people feel better before the game and think it will be an easy game. It, it will not be an easy game, it will be the opposite. And If you are ready for that, if we are at our best, if we, if we do what we are good in, then it's difficult for Huddersfield. Then that's clear, but first of all, we have to do it. Jürgen, uh, just one more international break now, between now and March. Yes. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what you're able to do when the players come back? You've only got them for a couple of days, and, and how the Thursday and Friday pre-match differ to what you would do in a normal week when you, you've got, you know, the Monday, Tuesday, you've had all week to work with them. What, what sort of differences are? There? Well, it's a massive difference because you do, you have to put a lot of information in two days, so you cannot do a lot of training. You, you we 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 get informations from the from all the most of the all the FAs, not all of them, but most of them we get information, so we know kind of what they did intensity wise um, during the weeks. We, we can watch the games if not live, then then a bit later and um, and see their the intensity. But um, what they do in training, you usually you cannot. No, and we get a lot of these information, so that's one thing. And um, cannot ignore the, the, the traveling stuff that you really uh, that you really know how it is. If you, you fly overnight, you change the, uh, the time zone again twice, three times maybe in, in, in eight, nine days, and we all expect that it's that they have to be ready again. They, they, they are ready, they are ready, but I have to make the decision how ready. They are so that's that's pretty much. I would um, prefer, of course, to have more days. But it's, we always had that situation. It's not the first time. But you ask now, how is it different? The difference is that we have to put more information in two days. We have more meetings in two days than we have usually in the last two days before a game, and um, and we have to bring yeah them together on one path again because um, they play different positions, different. Systems. They fulfill different ideas in, 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 of, of different managers, and that's that's how it is. And now we have two days, but two days is okay. It's not that it's not possible. It's okay. We did it in the past, I, I think, quite well, but we have to do it again. That's it. It is also so for Trent Alexander-Arnold. You, you decided to take him out of the starting lineup for the game against Manchester City. 
uh, how has he responded to that? And is there a concern with a younger player when you take them out that when they come back in, sometimes it can lead to sort of confidence issues where they question what they do naturally? Which game? I don't know. When? You, you took Trent out of the starting lineup for the game against City. Oh, right, yeah. And what, what, what influence that could have? No, I mean, in terms of how has he responded and also is there a concern... He was, you have to ask Gareth, he was with Gareth after that game. <laughs> he's a fantastic boy, he's our boy, he's um, an outstanding player and of course he's smart enough to, 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 to take a situation like that. We have, a, thank God, we had a few options now um, to change the lineup. So if, if that's a... I don't think it's a challenge. But if a player is not ready for something like that, then then he will struggle over a career. That's how it is. It's not allowed to lose confidence because your manager doesn't let you play 12 games in a row. Um, I think he started all, pretty much all the other games before that. So that would be a silly decision to to think about that too much. He was completely fine. It was his birthday, the city game. I'm pretty sure. So I thought maybe the night before the game a lot of people will contact him and, and around the game will contact him, so I didn't want to disturb the, all this message exchange. And, um, and, and, and Joe can obviously play the position as well. Dejan is back, Joe Martip is back, would, have, would deserve to play. Um, so that's why we, why we did it. But um, and, uh, to be honest, and how always I think about the lineup First and foremost, the players I, I, I line up first situation, not in the same moment. Ah, what would it mean for a trend? So it doesn't work really like that. But that was absolutely nothing. He came back. He's in a in a in a in a good shape, a good mood. He enjoys the time with the national team a lot. Um, had a few minutes in a very special game against Spain, which was nice. And um, so yeah, in a good situation, I would say. Oh, since the Man United game, we know about Harry Wilson's free kick skills. I knew it before, but that was quite impressive and life and telling. Um, Genie's goal is not a big surprise to this kind of um, game. I, I texted after the game with, with Virgil, and first with Virgil and then with Genie, and Virgil told me he should have scored a second one, which I didn't see the chance. So, um, but I told him. <laughs> and um, so that's all good. If they would have been here and we would have played, it's, um, it's not unlikely that they would have scored here. So, uh, I, I think it was, a, you all made a lot of it about my, my, my comments about the, the Nations League, stuff like that, and um, people, uh, everybody has his opinion about, but all the things they say is exactly what I think it's too much in that competition. Because they say, now we have proper games, now we have that, real opponents, and it's better than having any friendlies and stuff like that. That sounds all good, but it's like you, you don't want to see, or yeah, maybe people want to see Joshua fighting every second night. Well, it's not possible. But they would say, oh, another fight, nice, this week and there, and then next week he fights in Leeds and then in Manchester, and then he fights there. It's not possible. Nobody asked for it. In no other sports, there's no... If you play American football, you have a summer break that's longer than our season nearly. Sorry, but it's not that long, but it's a real proper break. In each sports you play, basketball, they, they, they have a, a summer league, whatever it is, and they come together. So it's everywhere. And only football, is because everybody seems to be interested in it, now we only have big competitions and we can get promoted and relegated. And now when Wales play, Wales, Wales play Ireland, then it's a, then they play for something and it, it, the atmosphere in the stadium is different. So at one point we only have to think, of, do we really want to be, an, do we want to have opera every night or every two months or whatever? So that's the question. We don't. We have to be. We have to be careful. That's all what I said. I don't say I like competition, of course. But at one point, somebody has to step back and think. Okay, wait, wait, wait. They are players. They play it. I want to watch it. But if they don't perform, then I'm angry. So how can we make sure that they perform? That was all what I wanted to say. The Nations League itself is a good idea. Do it with another sport. So because in football, there's no space for it, from my point of view. But. I realized already I, that I could have told my, 
coffee machine because nobody's really uh, nobody's really interested in what is said. It's it's still my opinion. I cannot change that. It's only about that we only have highlights now. It's highlight, 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 highlight. So where is the where's the rest? Where, where, when can we have normal kind of normal things? That's it. That's all what I was talking about. But if everybody's happy with it, we'll stay like this. Just going back to Navi Keita's injury, um, that game was played on an artificial pitch and he seemingly carried off on the back of a teammate. Do you think there should be more standardised level of facilities and equipment in international games as a whole? Yeah, of course. I, I don't think it's a problem to carry someone in, on, on the back of your... Um, from the pitch, I saw a very famous picture, 1974, when a Brazilian player got taken on the World Cup in Germany. I will never forget that picture because it was nice. So it's a, it, that's not a problem. Uh, in general, I think Jose said something about artificial pitch when they played. Which team? Ben? Yeah, uh, Switzerland team. So do I do I think it's it's fair to play um, the same game on different? Surface, I say yes. It's okay. Rain, snow, whatever is absolutely okay. We are used to that. Artificial pitch is not a it's not a surface for football for me. So that's that's how it is. So yes, if but I don't think that the injury had anything to do with that. To be honest, so I didn't even see it in that situation. And, uh, there was uh, um, was um, I only saw the situation when he went off, but I didn't look at the at the grass in that moment. Um, so, but in general, not only with. African teams or whatever, each thing what we can do to, to make sure that everybody gets the right, um, the right treatment immediately in the moment when he needs it, yeah, I think we should make sure that that is the case, of course. It's normal, huh? so um, hopefully nobody forgot how good he was before he uh, his little injury obviously started a little bit. So um, yeah, and of course now he's he's extremely close uh, to the team. But of course we have to make sure now and have to see how we can how we can bring him in stuff like that. But he will play. He will play first team football for Liverpool again. That's the best news. And um, when it will start, we will see. But he's. Um, is a proper, uh, proper option again. It's good. Close. But I didn't see him. Uh, Fabinho and. And Bobby, honest, no, no, Fabinho trained. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't see him for ten days. So that's um, not the best thing to judge exactly um, um, how he is. But um, no, very close. He was never far away. So that's how it is. It's only well, I spoke about it. But what uh, that he needs to get used to different things. That's how it is for all the players. Um, I had this situation so often. I can't, I can't believe how often. So um, I don't like to tell too many old stories, but Ilkay Gundogan didn't play half a year. The only difference was he was a young player from Nuremberg and nobody asked for him. So that was the only difference. So, but, but he asked. He was on the squad. He was on the bench. He, he was, there were a lot of difficult moments. So um, it's, you need to be ready. That's how it is. And at one point, I have to make the decision if somebody's ready or not. And we, we made already a decision that he's the right player for us. But then now we have to come together. That's how it is. There's no, no no problem on that side. But I can imagine in that world, in a moment, that anybody asks you, or everybody asks you constantly, oh, you don't play. It's for the player, not really comfortable. And then for me, I don't care too much. But it's I have to explain it. But um, there's only one reason. Because other players fit better in the moment. It's one reason, no, no other. So it's not about, I don't make like this, and it's not important who plays on a position. I really think a lot about who plays on which position. And as long as always is a player ahead and is fresh and is, then the other player plays. It's about the, the, the new player to, to close that gap. It, always, it always, took, always took time, always, and will always take time. But when you close the gap, 
go and you make us better. That's the plan. Good, guys. We'll see you very much. Oh, sorry, sorry. Penny. Do you got oh, was, I mean, oh you? private. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a message for the Boston Red Sox after reaching the World Series. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't understand that game. Sorry. <laughs> And, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy they, they, they reached the final because I saw only one game they lost it, which they thought they cannot lose that game. But everybody told me. But obviously, baseball is like football; you can lose each game, um, and they did at night. And so I thought maybe it was about me, but no, everything is fine, and um, they are in the final, and um, it's great. Um, I don't know, opponent are uh, maybe. Never heard that name, these names before. <laughs> so I'm a football, obviously, idiot, so I don't know a lot about other sports. So, But um, I think reaching a final is good in each sport, so congratulations. Yeah.